I'm really excited to be here today. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll know that earlier this year, my husband and I, we bought our dream family car. So to prepare for that moment, it meant that for the last nine months, ever since my shopping spree in Europe last year, I have not bought any luxury goods. It's been a tough time for me. So finally today, I can present to you my first luxury purchase of 2018. Yes, that's right, it is July. This happens to be my second ever Louis Vuitton piece and my first ever Louis Vuitton pair of shoes, which are the Louis Vuitton seasonal star trail ankle boots. Now, I usually love looking at brand history, but I did talk about Louis Vuitton extensively in my Alma BB review. So in today's video, I'm going to focus on six other topics instead. Design, quality, fit, comfort, price, and of course my verdict. Now, a huge thank you to my subscribers for putting up with me, especially during the shopping drought. I have more shoes and more purchases planned for the months ahead, so it should be quite exciting. Let's get into it. Now, my subscribers might remember that I typically advocate waiting two years before you pull the trigger and you buy the item on your wish list. Two years for me is the time that I need to save up. It also gives me enough time to watch the market to see if there's opportunities to buy it at a bargain price. And also, I can be 100% confident that the item on my wish list is a forever piece and it's not just a spontaneous decision. Now, I did break that rule slightly to own these shoes. They debuted in February last year and because it's seasonal, every single month that ticked by, I was getting more and more nervous that I would miss my chance to own them. The final straw for me was when these shoes in every single size sold out in Sydney and Sydney was not going to restock. So that's when I knew I had to act. I had waited 16 months and it was finally time to confidently add these shoes to my collection. The number one factor which convinced me to pull the trigger was hands down the design. The moment I saw these shoes styled by a fashion blogger, it took my breath away. The block heel, the thick laces, the significant heel height, it results in a shoe that's bold and fierce. Pair this with the iconic monogram and you end up with a shoe that's full of character and really loud. Now in my shoe collection, the only other boots that I own are by Stuart Weitzman. And over time, I've gotten a bit frustrated over how generic they look. It's hard to tell them apart from any other brand's short black boots. So the Louis Vuitton Star Trail ankle boots feel like the complete opposite of generic and they're the solution to my wardrobe. Because of the dark tones, they can complement all outfits, whether I dress light or dark. And the striking details really demand attention and illustrate this shoe as one of a kind. For those of you who've watched my Alma BB review, you'll know that I loved how the bag seemed to have two personalities fused into one. There was the classic silhouette and the timeless print, yet the bag came in a miniature playful size, which seemed to give it a modern twist. In the same way, I feel like these shoes fuse together two contrasting ideas. The iconic monogram print and the glossy black details naturally makes a shoe look dressy. Yet it's a boot, and the chunkiness with the thick black lace-ups give it a grungy military feel. It's casual yet refined, sophisticated yet straight. As one of my Instagram friends put it perfectly, it's like Doc Martens and Louis Vuitton had a baby. The fact that the design is complex and interesting means that these boots can work across the full spectrum of styling possibilities. Whether you're in double denim or a really feminine, really delicate lace dress or just a simple sweater, I find that these boots can work every single time. When you dress more casually, then the boots appear to be the most refined element in your outfit, polishing everything off. And when you dress more formal, then the boots add a cool, effortless look. I suppose it's like when you're in a really nice dress, but you swap out your Chanel flat bag for instead a Chanel backpack. It's surprising, it's alternative, and it shows that you can have some fun and you're not too serious with your look. 
The Star Trail ankle boot is available in two other designs, all black with white laces and a hint of monogram in the shoe tag, or black on black with the label printed on the side. Both are ultra wearable because you just can't go wrong with black boots. But for me, I feel that it's starting to get into the generic look territory. And that's why I'm happy with my monogram shoes, which scream Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton does offer other flat soled boots, also in the iconic monogram canvas print. But I believe that the heel adds a lot to the design. It increases your styling flexibility because you have the option to dress up. It's sexy, it elongates your legs, which is important for short-legged people like me. And also, it introduces femininity back into a design which is otherwise quite tough and masculine. So because of the heel, I find the design to be perfectly balanced, and it can sway either way depending on how you style. I find the rounded toe quite exaggerated. It's really prominent and it drives home the military feel. I love the chunky white stitching. It is one of those details that references Doc Martens and it naturally draws your eye towards the rounded silhouette. When it comes to luxury goods, I find that weight is a good indication of quality. And in that case, these boots are far from light. Together, they're 1.1 kilos. So that's almost 600 grams weighing down each of your feet. I've scrutinized every single inch of this shoe and I can't fault the craftsmanship. There are no loose seams, there is no messy stitching. All the edges are perfectly sealed and all the stitches line up very well. The only part that annoys me is that the zipper has a tendency to get caught. When you leave the zipper open, the monogram canvas tends to sag straight away, probably because it's thick and heavy. And also because the monogram never sits flat on the shoe. It's always curved in some way so that it can mold to the shape of your foot. So when the zipper's open and you're trying to pull it up, the monogram tends to get in the way at some point. So what I usually end up having to do is run my finger along the zipper path manually lifting up and parting the monogram to make sure it's not too close and then I won't have any issues. So it's not a deal breaker but it's just strange that I've bought zip up boots for $20 without any issues. So is it acceptable that you'll have a Louis Vuitton pair where you have this issue? I'm going to keep an eye on the shoelaces. It's made from leather and the edges are left unsealed. I do wonder if this will fray or weather poorly in the future, especially if I'm ever caught in the rain. I have to admit I'm really disappointed in the two dust bags that came with the shoes. When I opened the box, even my husband saw straight away that they weren't the same colour. And also, the dust bags are undersized, so you get this really awkward fit where the boot doesn't even sit perfectly inside the dust bag, and that kills the OCD perfectionist inside me. Now, it doesn't hurt anyone, it doesn't hurt anything, but I just think Louis Vuitton should get these basics right when you're paying such a premium. In a similar harmless but also questionable manner is the case where you receive your spare shoelaces. It's kind of undersized, so it can never stay closed no matter what you try. So again, it's not the best first impression when you unbox your shoes. I have a history of not sizing my shoes correctly, and unfortunately, I've done it again. These shoes are a size 37, but I should have gone for a 37.5. In terms of the shoe width and also the fit around my ankle, the default from the store is skin tight. You wouldn't even be able to fit thick socks in these. You have to go for your thinnest pair of cotton socks. The good news though is that the width is adjustable, you just have to redo all these shoelaces. However, uh, and this is the reason why I want to go for 37.5, in terms of shoe length, my big toe is just touching the front which feels a bit awkward. So I've decided to keep the shoe super tight around my ankle and around my width so that my foot can't slide further forward. Some of you guys might be familiar with the feeling of having your ankles bound because that's the way it feels in these shoes. I find that I can't power walk, I can't take long strides because I can't get my ankle to tilt back 
as far as it usually does. But maybe that's a good thing because you have to walk in a more ladylike manner. It's definitely high, but honestly, walking in these shoes, it doesn't feel like I'm in high heels. First of all, the weight of the shoe and the rubber sole makes every step feel stable and firm. You don't get any of that uncertain rockiness when you're in a stiletto. Secondly, the chunky heel supports my body weight comfortably, so it relieves a lot of the pressure from my toes. Now, I haven't yet had an excuse to wear these shoes all day, but my expectation is that the balls on my feet and my toes should be very happy. It's just a matter of whether or not I get sick of the feeling of having my ankles shackled, and also if my feet get tired because they're constantly getting weighed down by this heavy shoe. As I mentioned earlier, I believe these shoes can work with even the most feminine, most delicate dresses. So I'm excited to designate these boots as my future backup dancing shoes at wedding events. So instead of me hobbling around all night in heels or giving up and just going around barefoot, I can switch into these boots, be comfortable, keep the height which elongates my legs and also make it work with my outfit. So, considering how I'm over the moon with the design and also the versatility of the shoe across my entire wardrobe, why did I take so long to purchase it? Price. In Sydney, these shoes retail for almost $1,900 and I was reluctant to pay that price. So I kept instead an eye on pre-loved options on eBay. Although because the shoe is relatively new and relatively rare, options were trickling in. Plus, when it comes to shoes, it's important to find your exact size, so that narrowed my options even further. Finally, a chance popped up when my in-laws decided to spontaneously visit Europe, and they had spare luggage space. They helped me to pick up these shoes from Barcelona. The recommended retail price was almost a thousand euros, and tax back was 13%. Ultimately, it meant a saving of almost 29% compared to if I bought these shoes brand new in Sydney. For those of you who weren't aware, you receive your tax back when you lodge the form at the airport and you can receive that credit in two different ways. Either they electronically transfer the money to your nominated credit card or, and this is what my in-laws chose, you can receive cash on the spot in euros, although they charge a small service fee. Before I began collecting designer high heels, I loved wearing little heeled boots. Whether I'm dressed super casually, like in jeans and a t-shirt, or I'm in a smart casual dress. Little boots are not the sexiest, but the comfort is a relief, and the extra bit of height is always flattering. So if your plans changed and you suddenly had to be out all day long or you had to run to catch a train, you could do that in your little boots. Transitioning to a luxury wardrobe where I wanted to invest in pieces that could stand the test of fashion circles and also inject a lot of personality into my outfit, I had struggled for a while to find the luxury equivalent of my little heeled boots. Originally, I thought that something as simple and classic as Stuart Weitzman boots would do the job, but I've actually found that it feels like I'm wearing $50 boots except that I pay 10 times the price for it. It doesn't add anything special to my wardrobe. That's where the revival of heeled military boots combined with bold Louis Vuitton canvas completely filled the void that I was suffering. These shoes are sexy, street, masculine, feminine, memorable, fun, grungy, elegant. It can be everything and anything just depending on how you style it. Now in Sydney it's winter and I bought a whole new series of denim pieces so I'm really excited to experiment and mix and match between casual and formal, daytime and nighttime. Usually our handbags are always the star of the show so it's really exciting and refreshing to have a pair of shoes with enough personality that this can actually be the focal point of your outfit. The other factor which I felt like was fate is that I only own one Louis Vuitton piece which is the Alma BB in Damia Iben canvas. I knew that my collection wouldn't be complete unless I added a touch of monogram, but I had been hesitating for a long time over picking a bag 
handbag in monogram. I find the print very loud and I prefer instead my handbags because they are a larger size to be more restrained, more elegant and that's why I chose Damia Ibn. So now that I was able to find it in these shoes, I love that they scream Louis Vuitton. I wasn't comfortable with handbags that scream Louis Vuitton, but I love it in this shoe. One detail I do find awkward is how stiff and heavy duty the shoelaces are. When I received it from the store, it was quite loose, so I decided to retie it. However, as you can see, it still keeps the original position. And as a result, it looks like crazy wonky whiskers. You know when your dog or your cat has slept in a funny position and their face goes all strange? So I do wonder how long it's going to take before these shoelaces, shoelaces settle down. I think this is the other reason why I decided not to redo all the shoelaces to widen the shoe. Because it's going to be stiff and difficult to mold, I think it will be quite an exercise. As steep as the price is, ultimately I'm very happy with this purchase and I do wonder if one day it will ever reach the status of a new classic shoe trend, like the iconic Valentino rock studs and Manolo Blahnik. I also do wonder if Louis Vuitton will bring this shoe back in the future with more design variations. So everyone, that brings me to the end of my shoe review. To date, I've uploaded two videos on my shoe collection, but today is my first time conducting a detailed review where I dissect my shoe in the same way that I've dissected my handbags. Let me know if you enjoyed that and if you want to see more. Now for those of you who've watched my luxury bag display video, which is a type of bag storage solution, you would have noticed that I originally intended to talk about diet and fitness. I just got a bit too excited and a bit distracted. I'm going to delay the topic again because next month I want to share with you another shoe purchase I've been very excited about. My first pair of Manolos. They're not the Hanger C, so let's see if you can guess what I picked for myself. I wish you guys a great month and I'll see you again soon.